Hello everyone and welcome to the Survivor Savant Podcast. I am your host, Nathan Newport, the self-proclaimed Survivor Savant himself. And today, we are talking about the things that have occurred in episodes of... Oh my goodness, <laughs> I almost lost my train of thought. So that's what I was saying. Uh, we are going to be talking about the topics that have happened within Survivor, the Australian Outback, episodes uh, 10 through 12. Yes, I almost forgot the numbers there for a second. My bad. Now, um, it has been a couple of weeks since I've done a podcast episode. Uh, the first week that I didn't do it, I was uh, on a personal field trip hip to see some family members. Uh, second, I got to film my audition video for Survivor. So, fingers crossed, hoping that I will get to be on on uh, season 49, hopefully. But, with that said, let's uh, get into the podcast now and uh, get to work on uh, finishing up the season. So, we get into episode 10. Now, this is after her Jerry got voted out from, from her uh, tribal council. Uh, Jerry is now the second person on the jury. And Amber is definitely bummed out about being left out of the vote. And also because uh, Jerry was probably one of the closest allies she had while she was out there. And the fact that her tribe let her out of the vote when they didn't clue her in on it just shows how much trust there is in Amber. Like how much they don't trust her, I, I'd say, based on that. I'm almost stuttering my words, my bad. <clears throat> but uh, as we're getting near the end, as it's uh, closing out, uh, we're starting to see that camp has been kind of like uh, very, I wouldn't say quiet almost, but almost di- dire. Now, of course, you got Amber having to deal with if still living and with uh, her former tribe mates who turned her their backs on her after voting out on uh, Jerry but they also still have three Kucha tribe members remaining still who are they're wanting to get rid of because overall I guess they still want to stick with the uh, original plan that Tagi made and do the uh, Oga coring there oh my gosh I just read the new phrase you got Pagangi and now you got Oga coring no wait that's the tribe that's trying to get rid of the other tribe. Uh, Kucha. Kucha. Hmm. What would be a good, like, Pagonging saying for Kucha? Let me know what you guys think, think about what would be a good phrase for uh, Kucha. If it's not the Pagonging, like in last season, then what do you, you guys say it is? Let me know in the comments. But, uh,. But no, as I was saying, the camp conditions at the moment are currently drastic. Uh, they're almost out of rice. They don't really have a lot of rice left. Uh, and as far as fishing goes, they're trying to catch whatever fish they can, but they keep constantly look oozing their uh, fishing hooks, especially because of turtles. I, I saw one clip where there was like, like a turtle all snapping on, on the... Uh, the line of their fishing and lure and I'm like oh you jerk now I know why Bob from Gabon eats you in turtle soup oh my gosh um but anyway uh oh right so another resort that uh one tribe member Keith um he's resorted to is uh, catching grasshoppers. Ugh. I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying that. Grasshoppers. Um, apparently grasshoppers are like the uh, new diet out there in the outback. Um, my goodness. And to top that all off, there's also... Uh, there's also... Oh, Colby wanting to like... <laughs> I love how he's like... Referencing Karate Kid as... 
he's saying that he wants to learn how Keith uh, catches the grasshoppers. And he was like, I want the Grandmaster to teach this young grasshopper how to catch grasshoppers. I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying grasshoppers. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but grasshoppers. Uh, okay. I don't know if it was grasshoppers or crickets, but I remember there being... Uh, I remember there's a deal where you can have, like, chocolate-covered crickets or grasshoppers. I'm like, ooh, okay. Good for you. Uh. I run. I try to take chocolate covered gummy worms. Thanks. <laughs> oh my goodness. But um, because of the dire uh, food situation that's been uh, going on here, this will come back in a later part of the episode. But in the meantime, we get to the fun part about Survivor. And if you guys have seen this episode before, you know exactly what I mean. Um, we have, I'm of course talking about the Survivor Auction. Now, this is an all-time fan favorite. This was the uh, season that originally started, and it originally aired in this season. And to see it actually where it began is really cool. Now, this is, um, this is something that will be in Survivor throughout history, um, for a while, the last time they done it was in Survivor 30, where uh, it was kind of getting like getting mocked or tired of because anybody who was in the auction was only saving up her money just so it, it can uh, bid on the uh, advantage in the game, which is why, for the most part, they got rid of it and, and then bring it back until Survivor 45, where... There are no um, advantages at play. It was only just food or disgusting food, depending on, on what you get, which is great. Um, now, here's my opinion about the Survivor Auction. I think it's great that people can go to this auction and bid on, on something that they see and they like. And if, as long as you have enough money for it, then you can totally afford for the food. I mean, me and myself... If I was in the auction and one of the items was a cheeseburger, I would hands down, like, <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. If you put a cheeseburger with fries and a root beer in front of me, I am totally going to bid all my money on it. I don't care. <laughs> but um, I will say this. As far as advantages go in the auction, I mean, it's one thing to, like, make sure you have an upper hand in this game to make sure that you're not uh, at risk of going home. But at the same time, it kind of like takes the fun out of Survivor. And that's what most people criticize nowadays is that advantages, they like to take the fun out of Survivor. I mean, if you're a smart player, you know that however you use this advantage, depending on what the advantage is, it's going to benefit towards your game and it will totally help you in the end. But at the same time, People don't actually, like, respect advantages all that much since uh, the first advantage was uh, revealed. Um, I think the first advantage, I would say, that was ever used or revealed in Survivor would uh, have to be the, like, the extra vote advantage. This, th that advantage also uh, aired in uh, Season 30. You know, Survivor. Her Survivor Worlds Apart. Uh, Dan Fogler. I, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name wrong. Dan Fogler. Um, he bid on it, you know, along with Mike and Callaway and Carolyn and Rivera. Um, now, because they all had the same money, he, they got to who, who bid all their money on it. And also... Um, Okay, I don't want to get too far into what uh, this season entails or what it's all about. And, well, I guess I kind of spoil it for you guys. But, I, I mean, for the new listeners, I'm sorry. I, I can't help if I, I want to express my survivor knowledge. It's 
it's uh, something that's a uh, blessing and a curse. I can't help it, especially for those who haven't seen the show. But I will say this. If you guys are wanting to watch, like, Worlds Apart and see what it's all about, then uh, enter at your own risk is all I can say. Because there's a lot of good, but there's also a lot of bad that comes to watching this season. But anyway, I'm going to get back to the season that I'm currently on, and we'll see what happens. Um, so, back at the yeah, Outback. <laughs> um, there's obviously a lot of excitement going on with them about how there's going to be food involved in this challenge. It makes sense. If it's the Survivor Auction, everybody's going to be excited about bidding on food and items that they want. Um, I think, all right, so for those of you who don't know what the Survivor Auction is, basically it works like a regular auction, where Jeff would present an item right in front of you, who sometimes it'll be covered, sometimes it wasn't, it wouldn't be, and in order to get that item, you would have to bid the amount of money you would have, let's say like you have $500 or something, and you have to bid on it, you have to use money increments of $20, and whoever has the highest bid gets that item. And after Jeff says, going once, going twice, sold, you get the item. And there was a lot of good items in this uh, auction for its uh, very first time. You got like Doritos with salsa, uh, Mountain Dew, there's also like a I wouldn't say necessarily like a Thanksgiving dinner, but it definitely looked like it. There was turkey, mashed potatoes, bread, green beans, even cranberry. He's, uh, I'm not a cranberry person myself. However, I, okay, I'll say this about cranberries. If it's in something like a like a baked good, then I'll I'll eat it. But cranberries on its own, oh, like cranberry juice, I'm not a big fan of. Um, and then also there are other items like, uh, crackers and there's also, oh my gosh, <laughs> chocolate and peanut butter. Yes. There was like four squares of chocolate and a single like dip scoop of, uh, peanut butter. And as you guys know, survivor and peanut butter and chocolate, oh, two ants. That's a lot. Are uh, something that had people absolutely crave for on Survivor, and Elizabeth was the lucky one who got the bid on that, and get the chocolate and peanut butter, which is great. Um, I'm trying to remember what other items there were. Oh yes, I remember uh, Colby. He got to bid on a uh, power or a protein bar. And also uh, an iced coffee. Now, in my opinion, I think that's a good thing to uh, bid on. I mean, yeah, it's a little sweet, but at the same time, it can also give you good energy. Which uh, we'll see for Colby in that instance. But I remember... Uh, oh my gosh, I just realized. Kentucky Joe Roger... Uh, he got to bid on the one item I would want if I was in the Survivor Auction, and that's a cheeseburger. Like, it had all the fixings. It had um, a delicious bun. Um, my goodness. It, it, I'm just stunned and amazed and, oh, I wish I had that burger. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. I just realized. Uh, I remember there being... Okay. So if you guys know this, the Survivor Auctions always have this, like, uh, in the words of Will Neff, a podcaster he used to, well, I don't know if he's, like, a podcaster or a streamer. I'd say he's more streamer. If you guys know who uh, Will Neff is, uh, he used to stream on, well, I, I'm sure he's still streaming on Twitch, but uh, he streams on Twitch and that he used to do Survivor Reaction videos. Uh, one of my favorite reaction videos of Survivor that he did was, uh, I mean, I know it's my favorite season, but Cook Islands. I feel like that's my favorite 
um, reaction of Survivor that he's done, mostly because of the events that occur in Cook Islands. But you guys know what happens. Anyway. And uh, in the words of Will Neff, whenever there's a Survivor auction, he always says, okay, who's going to get the can of spiders? Or a bag of spiders? Or a bowl of spiders? I don't know which one he uses, whether it's can or bag of spiders, uh, but there's normally that kind of item. It's a word for it's a bad item that you're going to be bidding on. Now, we've seen it all uh, through uh, Survivor. There's uh, sea cucumbers. There's bat soup. Oh, that was even more disgusting. And uh, I say it. Um, there's also been... Okay, recently, there are these two big fish eyes. I mean, I'd say they were just about as big as an apple, if I can recall. There were these huge, big fish eyes, and it freaking amazes me how in the world they would get something ain't that freakishly big. I don't know what those fish eyes came from, but... Man, shout out to the guy who had to catch that thing and pull out its eye sockets. I'm sorry if I sound gross to you listeners, but, you know. Okay, let's, now that I'm getting into that subject, though. If I were having to bid on a mysterious item that I had no idea what was going to be uh, a disgusting food item... Would I react and say, am I eating that or am I going to, like, take it with me but not eat it at all? I'm just, like, that's that's ultimately what I'm questioning. Okay, I will say this, though. Um, as far as disgusting food goes, was that's happened throughout the season, the one thing I would kind of, uh, I don't know what that sound was that I was making, but it almost sounded like I was snoring, my bad. Okay, but that's what I was saying. One disgusting food item I would say that I could kind of hope for bidding on is uh, one item that's not as bad is uh, chicken hearts. Because I heard that can be a very good protein in when cooked. So um, out of disgusting foods that I kind of hope to eat, I'm not going to lie, I would hope it would be chicken hearts. Now, normally... Eating, eating like uh, intestines or organs would be a disgusting thing. I, mean, I absolutely agree, but for a lot of people, uh, I mean, if you guys have seen Master Chef, it's amazing what you can do with, if uh, like with the uh, organs when they're cooked. But anyway, if I were on Survivor, that's what I would eat: uh, chicken hearts, as if I was to bid on a disgusting food item. Um, so, as I'm watching this, uh, auction go on, uh, Amber, I mean, she was able to bid on, like, fries and some ranch dressing, which was good, and she also bid on, uh, Mountain Dew, that's also awesome, uh, don't drink too much of it, though, oh, I highly recommend that, <laughs> but, uh, what the final item that she bid on was uh it was a glass of Herbert River water. Now the Herbert River is along the camp to where they live. Uh that's where your campsite is, along the Herbert River, which is in Queensland. Um and at that time that was the uh bowl of spiders that uh that started this whole like disgusting food item bin and nobody wants to get the bag of spiders let's be real nobody wants bat soup <laughs> um but as i'm watching this i mean yeah she also tied okay nick is probably the one who bid on items the most and had the most items so, at this point, he would seem the most full. But I just realized this now. Amber also bid on the same amount of items. So, 
out of the whole like auction that I've seen, Nick and Amber are the two who I've bid on the most items out of that auction. Now, I don't know if it would make any difference to how that would impact their games, but I know it would uh, impact one of their games in this episode. I'm not going to say who, but for those of you guys who know, you know. But anyway, after the auction is over, they get back to their camp, and of course, you go a certain amount of days without food, you're definitely going to get the uh, after her... uh, I'm not the after effect. I think that's the right word for it. The after effect of what will happen when you eat too much food. When it's been so long since you had food. You're going to either one, throw up, or two, uh, make a business in the woods. That's that's the perfect way of saying it. Uh, You're going to make a business in the woods in order to get some relief um I think I mean I'll say this much about Amber even though she didn't like uh get too many items like she only got like six fries and a cup of Mountain Dew it still wasn't enough like it's not hurting her same with Colby you know you got a protein bar or an iced coffee that wasn't enough to hurt him um, so they're, <laughs> I'll say this much, whatever strength they did get from that food, it either haunt, it will either help them or haunt them, depending on, on how much you eat. Like, and that's something actually, uh, a few friends of mine, even my parents have warned me about if I were to ever be on Survivor. If you're on a reward where it involves food. Uh, the worry is that you might eat too much to the point where it might make you sick. I mean, yeah, it will be great at first, but it's eventually going to come back to bite you. So, and I'm even watching my uh, portion limit and myself as far as food goes. I mean, I eat just about like 3,000 calories a day. Um, so, I kind of like... Make sure that I don't go beyond my limits and also know how much I should eat and how much I shouldn't. And I'm doing the best I can as far as managing my weight goes and making sure I exercise. And it's it's been really crazy. But yeah, as far as managing food goes, you, just like alcohol, you got to manage and know your limits. If you don't know that this is going to be too much for you and it's going to give you a, a bad after or uh, event after, then it's not going to be pretty. I'll say this much. It's not going to be pretty. But anyway. Um, we get into... Oh, sorry. I almost burped. I almost burned my breakfast. Jeez. Uh, we get into uh, the the immunity challenge. I almost lost the word there for a second. Oh my goodness. We get into the immunity challenge. Now this challenge involves two things. Fire and water. Two of the most important essentials out there in survival. Now, in this challenge, they're going to have to make fire in order to win immunity in order to do this they would have to gather supplies okay there's this like teeter totter contraption with a burning urn on the top of it and one side is more top heavy the other side height isn't in order to get the in order to win this challenge you have to like make a fire or at least get get supplies first um put them in the bucket where it's not it's currently on the ground right now and then try to start or fire 
with matches or magnifying glass, whatever or you can to start the fire. And while it's still lit, this gives you the opportunity to like go out into the river or a water source and fill your other bucket on the other side with water to get it to go down as the fire barrel is lit. And there's also a hole in the uh, bucket that you're filling the water in. And as long as you keep managing to fill it up with water, it'll still be top heavy, but you have to keep watching as it, it's like leaking. Because it, if it's still leaking, if it, it's going back up, then you have to refill it again. And if your fire goes out, you ha also have to like make sure that it stays constantly um, heated or like lit. And um, the first person to get the fire or of their fire urn lit wins immunity. Now this is the first challenge. This is the first season to where this challenge was. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that fire a fire making challenge isn't a first. I mean, we have seen it in uh, last season. But this is like a new alteration of it, I would say. And uh, this would be the first season to use this type of alteration. The next time that it would be in it would be uh, All-Stars, where they bring it back. And I thought it was actually a cool idea, the way they gathered the supplies and put them in one bucket. Then they had to like go out and fill all the other side with water. And try to get their uh, wicklet. I'm not gonna lie. As far as like classic survivor challenges go, I mean, everybody wants to see, uh, get a grip, or uh, the one sandbag challenge where they have to carry you know, all the weight that they have and run across the uh, the track and try to catch up to the yard tribe. I love challenges like that. I would love to see challenges like those again. But uh, I feel like this challenge probably deserves a lot more credit than it's due. And if it does make a comeback, I would absolutely love to see uh, a current uh, rendition of this challenge. I mean, shoot, maybe it could be... No, actually, no. That wouldn't work as the Final Four challenge. Oh, another challenge I would love to see... Uh, be brought back is make it rain now if you guys know what this challenge is it's basically you hold up in your ha your hand in the air while it's being attached to a big bucket of water if you move your hand down huh the and the chain feels it and the bucket will spill uh dyed water over you and you're out of the challenge the last time they did this was in Winners at War. I would love to see this challenge make a comeback. I'm not going to lie. It's one of my favorite challenges. And I feel like if I practice long enough for this, I, I absolutely feel like I, think I can nail this challenge. It would be cool if I can nail this challenge. If it ever comes back. But anyway, we get into the challenge where uh, you have to light the fire barrel as you're filling up with water. And making sure that your fire is constantly lit. Um, at first, people were trying to like make sure that their fire was going. I know a few of them had their troubles. And Colby was the one who was able to make sure that his fire was lit as the as he was filling his barrel. And even though it went out for a little while, he still managed to like bring it back and managed to refill his water bucket side and eventually his fire urn got lit and he was able to win the challenge this was colby's uh first ever win this was the first time uh colby had won an immediate challenge now i say first time because it won't be the last i will say that i'm not gonna say how many times but this was his first one and it won't be his last but just for the record, Keith has won two immunity challenges. Uh, Nick has won one immunity challenge. 
And when they get back to camp, it's an interesting situation that they're put in. Jeff arrives with an offer. You see, Jeff has brought with him a canister full of rice that will last him enough for the rest of the game. But there's just one condition. Now, in Jeff's condition, he's a giver and a taker. Whatever he gives, he needs to take something back in return. Now, this is kind of hard because, I mean, I know they're having a hard time out there and they absolutely need the food. But in order to do that, you have to give up something. Uh, which we have absolutely seen before in another past season, which was Survivor uh, San Juan del Sur. Um, it's crazy, you know? But in this case, uh, Jeff wants the tarp and the... Uh, Texas flag that Colby brought with him. He wants those items in return for the uh, rice that they he need. At uh, first, they're a little hesitant about that. Uh, they were even at first wanting to offer them like a blanket in, in exchange for the, uh, the rice instead of the tarp and the Texas flag. But Jeff wasn't having it. Then he swing the deal. By giving them also extra fish hooks. And I think it was a good offer, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, they had to give up the tarps, but at the same time, at least now they'd be able to be more comfortable with the fact that they have more uh, food and ways to catch food. So, sorry, Colby. You have to say goodbye to your good old Texan flag. As we get further into the episode, um, we get the tribal council. As we can see, the jury is growing more and more when we see uh, Alicia and Jerry sitting over there. Now, there have been talks of... Uh, there have been talks of getting rid of Nick because he's not really productive around the camp. He's mostly s laying around, not really doing much work. Wherever there's food, he'll eat the food. Which is the reason why he's been so good at some of the challenges, because he's not really uh, draining his energy. Now, I don't know if I have talked about this in the past episodes, but learning how to balance uh, conserving your energy and also whole working, making sure you're not seen as lazy, is a hard thing to balance, because... I know you need rest in order to make sure that you perform well all out there or in those conditions. But at the same time, you have to like make sure that you're putting in effort to make sure that you last out there longer. It hasn't been easy for anyone. But if you want to really prove your worth, then you have to put in the work. I mean, that's, that's as far as I'll say. As far as that goes. And. I think. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember. Keith. Was uh, somebody who was. Targeted because. He has. Won two previous mini challenges in the past. And. It's surprising. That nobody has voted for him yet. But. What's also surprising is that. Keith didn't bring his bags. Or any kind of stuff that he brought with them. You know, everybody else did, but he didn't. And Nick saw that as a sign of cockiness and arrogance. The fact that hey, he didn't bring his stuff. Now, in my opinion, I feel like that would kind of be he triggering too. The fact that he didn't bring his stuff. I mean, not going to lie. I would admit at first maybe he forgot to bring his stuff. But if I knew Keith long enough up out there, I would say, wow. This guy's so confident that he's good at this game. He didn't even bring his stuff to Tribal Council because he knows that he's not going to get a vote out. Well, here's a twist. The tribe has spoken. Like, <laughs> that would be my reaction, too. Like, if you feel confident that you're not going home, boop, tribe has spoken, you're out. <laughs> uh, 
But no, um, so Keith was on uh, somebody's radar, Nick's radar. And then, I think also, uh, I think Amber got a few votes, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Which would make sense, because of uh, her being on the outs of the uh, Jerry vote. But, uh, no. Uh, even though they were fractured after the Jerry vote... The other core got to align with each other and voting on, on the one person who wasn't really pulling their weight, which was Nick. So Nick was the tenth person eliminated and to be the third member of the jury. So we get into the next episode and they're they're feeling good knowing that they have the uh the rice and the fish hook hooks that they got and um I'm I'm sorry. The reason why I'm taking my time with if explaining to you guys or telling you guys my thoughts about on these episodes is because I am like preparing myself for what is coming up and it's it's a hard one to deal with. But uh we get into the next episode and I'm going to cut straight into the immunity, uh, not the immunity, the war challenge for this uh, episode because it's one you might remember and the reward is really, <laughs> it's cool. It's really cool. Um, so for the immunity, uh, I almost said immunity. Why am I mixing up the challenge names? For the reward challenge, um, it's the same one that they used last season where they have uh, several different like lines of rope and they have carabiners to attach themselves to the ropes. They have to follow the rope into in order to get to the marked stations and collect the carabiner. Once they have the carabiner, they move on to the next uh, station. Now, there will be ropes that lead to different areas. Some of them might be dead ends. So you, you have to like follow which uh, rope leads to le which station. And if you want to get off to another rope, you got to detach from the carabiner that you ha have onto one rope and attach it to another rope. And move on from there. Whoever get to the uh, first, like, five or six, six... First five or six stations first and get to the finish line wins reward. Now, in this case, it's a good reward, I'm not going to lie. You get to have a good old fashioned, like, Australian cowboy, a, uh, not barbecue, cowboy cookout. I feel like, like, like a, I feel like cowboy cookout would be appropriate term for here. Because out of nowhere, we see these Australian, like, cowboys or ranchers coming in on horses. And Jeff asked them what the reward is, which was uh, beef stew and beans. And there's also this bread uh, at the end of the reward challenge that the winner got to taste. And not going to lie, it absolutely looked good. I don't remember what the name of the bread was, but it absolutely looked good. And then aside from that, they get also get to have a good night's sleep in a bed and... In the morning, they get breakfast, including eggs and bacon. Oh, that's a good breakfast combo. Now, me personally, I'm an eggs and sausage person, but I also like bacon. I, I Bacon is good. I'm more of sausage, but I am a bacon person. So I will absolutely take that. And then we get into the challenge. Now, it's a race. I think the closest... This one we got, it was between uh, Colby and, I think it was Amber, if I'm not mistaken. Colby and Amber were at head-to-head, -head, but in the end, it was uh, Colby who got the one that challenge. This is the second challenge that he won. Okay, actually, no. It's not the second challenge that he won. The first, like, I mean, yeah, there's, there was an immunity challenge that he won, but... I would say the first challenge he won as an individual, kind of, 
uh, it was when he had that team challenge with uh, Jerry. And the reward was that he got to take her, her on a trip to the uh, Great Barrier Reef. And I don't know if I've mentioned this in my last podcast episode, but Colby was uh, fined or got in trouble for taking pieces of coral from the Great Barrier Reef. And uh, let's be real. I mean, yeah, there's one thing to treasure and savor the moment and that you got to visit to Great Barrier Reef. Uh, but I guess taking a picture of it was not uh, enough for uh, somebody. I mean, that's how I looked at it. If you want to really remember or that moment, you take something from that moment with you. Now, in my opinion, it should be a picture. But no, I, sometimes, sometimes, if you grab something that you really want to savor or from that moment, then by all means. But not like a national wonder like the Great Barrier Reef. I, that's not like, that's not something you should do. But uh, no. Anyway, uh, Colby won the challenge. He got to go to the uh, cowboy cookout. And while the rest of them um, were heading back to camp. Now, this season has probably had one of the most craziest weather conditions we've seen. I mean, that will probably be topped off by when they get back to uh, Fiji. But uh, there was a storm. There was rain. I remember when Colby was riding on the horses, the horses were like freaking out and rain was pouring. But the worst thing that could happen is, so you got to remember, if you're camping, and if you're camping near a river, chances are there's going to be a high chance, at, depending on what kind of weather you have, there might be a flood. And the flood is gonna wash away some. Uh, flood's probably gonna wash away some really important essentials. I mean, okay, this is a reason why you should. Uh, this is a reason why you should make your camp up on higher ground, so that way you have less risk of losing stuff. Because as we've seen, when the tribe built their camp on like a dry. A uh, sand bed near the river, the flood comes in, and it knocks down a couple of their camp stuff. It's in their shelter, or it's terrible. But the worst part, it took the cancer of rice with it. How crazy is that? And not only that, how crazy is the film crew for just filming and seeing what happens? And just letting that go. Like, dude, you're screwing with their lives here. And yeah, I know that the film and production crew can't uh, get into, like, they can't prevent stuff from, this stuff from happening. Unless it's a medical situation. Or even worse, uh, a really disturbing and uncomfortable situation, which would occur in uh, season 39, but I'm saving that for another time. But uh, no, they can't interfere with what happens in the camp. That's crazy. Jerk move is all I can say at that time and for, the film crew, for the film crew. Jerk move. But they came back to camp. They saw that the camp was flooded and that their rice was gone. And late at night, uh, I remember that late at night, they were looking for rice and they found it in the river, hooked up to some kind of like log. And at first they were gonna like go out into the river and swim and get it, but the the river was like too like fast for them. Um, or, to like swim in and nobody was crazy enough to do that. So Keith uh Keith decided to get on top of the log and go and get the rice and with a little help from Tina, huh, he was able to get it back for the camp and 
Everybody's pleased. Everybody was happy. And it's good. I think, for me personally, if you can somehow manage to not only provide fish for your tribe, but somehow manage to be the hero or rescuer of your main tribe's food source, it's, uh, it's a good feeling to have. But everybody's happy at camp. I mean, yeah, they still have to deal with the after effect of uh, the flood going through their camp. And I know they have to rebuild on top of the the more higher area. That's that way there'd be less risk of uh, floods going on up there. But in the meantime, Colby is just having a good old time with the Australian cowboys and eating beef stew and beans and shoot, even a few beers like Bud Lights, I think. Uh, and there's this one cowboy who was got his guitar and he's singing a song like this is a song I call Drinking With Your Mates okay I'll say this much there's nothing that beats a good old campfire or setting like having like a good old campfire song on with the guitar and I'm not gonna lie I myself wanted like okay I'm not a professional like songwriter or lyricist or poet but uh I've been mean to like continue a song that I've been currently working on. On it's, uh, I mean, since I'm bringing this up, there's like no hint of what the song is called, but uh, it's still a work in progress. Though, I I think there will be a time where I can feel comfortable enough once I get it done that I'll express it to you guys. But in the meantime, I I think it's best if I just leave that project aside and focus on the current ones I have, which is this podcast and the comics that I'm currently working on. Comic. I'm sorry. But anyway, so Colby's having a good time uh, around the campfire, eating food, drinking beer, singing with the cowboys, and then after that, he eventually goes to bed. And the next morning, he rises from bed gets some like toast or biscuit hits and get some jelly or peanut butter on it and that is good and then he got his uh eggs and bacon which he also put between like a biscuit and dang i wish i could have that food <laughs> but uh it's after colby got back he's seen what happened at camp and he got word of it and he he was he felt bad for them he felt bad that his tribe had to deal with that while he was having a good time but you know it's a game everybody wins rewards and sometimes you have to like feel like anchor on the bottom sometimes it's it's what happens but anyway we get into the next immunity challenge now it's a simple like challenge where you have like a slingshot and you have to aim it at some color plates that each have like a, a tribe member's name on it. Now there are different plates and and there are three plates for each player that are in this game. First, the last person with, with any number of plates left standing wins the challenge. Now, Colby definitely is going in with an advantage because he recently had good breakfast and had enough food that can replenish his energy. And he just starts knocking out plates. And I know Keith was, or Roger, her were trying to knock some of Colby's plates. And Colby's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I can't help it. It's a shiny blue plate. Which I'm not going to lie. <laughs> he, knowing how uh, perfectly uh, attention aware, it, or I'm not even sure if that's a proper way of saying it. Knowing how perfectly highlighted that target is, I would definitely knock out that target first because it's bright blue and it's an easy target to shoot for. Plus, it's best to get rid of the most athletic competitor while you can before he manages to win it somehow. And somehow, Colby manages to win. That's <laughs> it. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised how he won it. I mean, he's good at what he does he's a challenge competitor so this is the second time Colby has won individual immunity and good for Colby 
good for Colby is all I can say. Um, hmm. Now, it's the next tribal council, and it seems a little difficult going in because on one hand, Amber has been on the outs and she feel like she can turn on the rest of the Ogacore people if she wanted to, which it wouldn't matter because it would be 3-3, three, three, which would result in a tie, depending on who they vote for. And I guess, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, Elizabeth and Roger don't also don't want to take that chance either, so they vote along with Tina, Keith, and Colby, and get rid of Amber, making her the fourth member of the jury. So we're getting closer and closer as it down as getting down to the final five, which is Roger, Keith, Colby, Tina, and Elizabeth. We get into the next episode, and we see that they're feeling a little homesick, and that they're really missing their families. Lucky for them, though, the next reward challenge involves talking with their family through a computer and a, a satellite that's hooked up to communicating with them. Now we get, now aside from the uh, setup, uh, Outback Internet Cafe, there's also a few pastries. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I've been to a few Starbucks a couple of times. But I don't think I've ever been to, like, an internet coffee cafe. I mean, I'm sure that's Starbucks. But I would actually like to take my computer or tablet, if I ever had a tablet, to uh, to a Starbucks and do work there. Because it's a good, relaxed environment that anybody would go to, in my opinion. Uh, but no, it's nice. They got their computer set up. They got paste, different assortments of pastries or croissants that they can eat while text, talking. I almost said text. Oh, I'm so Gen Z. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting. Uh, we get to see their families. You got Elizabeth and her mom and her dad and her brother. Uh, you got Keith and his uh, girlfriend. You got Colby and his mom. And you got Roger and his wife and his uh, kids. And also Tina with her husband and her kids, including her daughter Katie, which we will see in a future season called Blood vs. Water, where Tina got to compete with her daughter. There is a story to that, though, that I will uh, get to talk about all in another time. But as they're talking to their family... He said, I only get to talk to them one time, and they got have to talk with them one time before the actual challenge starts. Now, the challenge incorporates their family is as they're answering these five different questions, like, in Australia, where does the sun rise? And there's also, what's the biggest bird in the world? Along with... Uh, in the outback, how many venomous snakes live there? And I don't remember the rest of the uh, questions, but um, it was Tina's husband slash family who got the most questions asked and answered correctly. So as a reward, Tina gets to spend more time, like 30 minutes or so, with their family members talking to them. And also, using Jeff Probst's personal visa card. I say that in quotes because I'm sure he changes it every now and then. That they get to go on a shopping spree with it. And before they he left, uh, each of the tribe members who didn't win the challenge got to say their goodbyes to their loved ones. But Keith, Keith really wanted to make it a rememberable message goodbye to his loved one. Um, he got to propose to his girlfriend through uh, the computer. And <laughs> she said, yeah. She said, yes. 
I, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there are a lot of cringy moments when it comes to like proposals, but it, it's nice to see. I'm I'm sorry. I'm a sucker for love. I can't help it if I'm I'm a lover and not a fighter and I'm a sucker for love. But if I see like a marriage proposal going on, I'm like, yes. It's good to see that stuff. People falling in love and getting married or getting engaged or, or proposed. That's uh, awesome stuff to awesome stuff to hear. Oh, I'm almost getting emotional. Uh and plus, Keith and uh, his uh I don't know if it's Catherine or Katrine, but I love their little nicknames that they have for each other. Uh, Keith calls her P or Sweet P, as she refers it. And then he, she calls him Carrots. I like that. It's cute. Um, but it's so great to see Keith have his happy moment. And it's nice to see everybody getting along. And it really felt like that they were outside of the game at that moment. Like, they weren't so focused on it anymore. They were just happy to see each other happy and really got to share love with each other and love with their families. Next day, though, um, Colby gets irritated by Keith because he's putting way too much rice in the uh, cooking pan or pot and they have to be careful with how much rationing they do. And I will admit, in a game like Survivor, you absolutely have to ration out your food. But no, Keith doesn't. He he goes ahead and uh, freaking puts in as much as he prefers. And he's not being, being smart about it. And Keith, he was hearing Colby telling him um, that it's not right. And I don't think Keith is having it. He's ignoring it. And Colby absolutely takes that personal. And he doesn't like Keith anymore from that moment on. Like, Keith is stubborn. He is not willing to listen. Which I can understand. I don't like stubborn people either when they don't want to listen. Um, so we get into the next mini challenge. Now, I think Oh, yeah, 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 I remember, I remember. I almost I lost my train of thought for a second on what the immunity challenge was. But no, I remember. Uh, so if you remember last season, they, at the Final Five, they had this, like, Survivor Folklore Challenge. Now, this challenge is very famous and would go on from um, Borneo until Survivor 31, or Survivor Cambodia, or Survivor Second Chance. And Jeff Probst would tell them a story about the origin of the Australian and Aboriginals and how they got their uh, start and how they lived out here for a thousand of years by adapting and surviving in the wilderness. And while they're listening to this, they're all, each, each of the tribe members are locked up in these chains or shackles with five locks on them. And once Jeff is done telling the story, they would go out into this field where there are different stations set up in order to unlock their shackle was they would have to answer questions relating to the story. If they get it right, they get a key that unlocks one of the locks. If they don't get it right, they can't unlock it and they would have to go to a different station. Once they have all five locks unlocked, they have to bring them back to Jeff and to uh and to who get them um or immunity. So like I said, first person that brings all five unlocked locks back wins immunity. And it was between Keith and Colby trying to get at the necklace. And at that time, Keith would be the one who would win. But he slipped on some wet grass and dropped something. He had all the locks that he unlocked, but he was missing one. He realizes that, uh, that he lost a lock out there. And before he could find it, Colby was able to bring back the lock and um, not bring back his lock, but bring back all of his locks. And he won his, uh, 
he won his third straight immunity challenge. This would go on as like one of the most longest runnings for a male person to win a lock or not a lock, an immunity challenge, an individual immunity challenge, and win a constant amount of winnings. Now we get into tribal council and it's very sad because during their time, this person has been a real motivator. He's been a hardworking guy. He's very good. He's very, uh, he's no nonsense and he's very good at what he does. And he takes no offense to anything. And it's really sad to see him go, but in a two to three vote, Kentucky Joe, aka Roger, was voted out and sent to the jury. Which, of course, Elizabeth was really sad because she was her outback daddy, <laughs> as she said. And she can't help but feel sad that one of her allies is going. And it's really heartbreaking. And nobody likes to see one of their closest allies go as we saw with Amber and when Jerry was voted out. But no, uh, Roger got voted out and he was the, and he was the fifth member, I almost lost my train of thought, the fifth member to join the jury. And we're down to the final four. Now, this is the usual part of Survivor where I get to answer a question from you guys and express my Survivor knowledge. And if you guys want to send in a question to me and want to test my uh, Survivor knowledge, send them to me through my Instagram accounts at Survivor Savant Podcast or at Mr. Nathan Newport. So the question is, how many seasons of Survivor has returning players? That's actually a good question. So the first season to ever have returning players was Survivor All-Stars. And then the second would be uh, Survivor Guatemala, when two returning players from last season got to return. Next was uh, Survivor Micronesia, fans versus favorites. Then Heroes vs. Villains. Then Redemption Island. Then South Pacific. Then Philippines. Then Caramoan. Then Blood vs. Water. Then uh, Second Chance. Then Cambodia, no wait, Cambodia and Second Chance were the same season. Uh, Game Changers, that's what I meant to say. And then Edge of Extinction, then Winners at War, and then finally, 45. So those seasons are seasons that have returning players in it. And by my calculation, that's like, I'm sorry, I'm counting it in my head. Actually, let me uh, repeat seasons again. Um, All Stars, Guatemala, uh, Micronesia, uh, Heroes vs. Villains, Redemption Island, South Pacific, Philippines, Caramon, Blood vs. Water, Second Chance, Game Changers, Edge of Extinction, Winners at War. And 45. So in total, that would be 14 seasons that have had returning players in the past. That's crazy. 14 seasons. Hey, I just remembered. Season 50, they're going to have returning players. Now, I'm curious to know what you guys think are going to be returning players for that season. Are you hoping it's going to be all-time favorites like Sandra or Boston Rob or Tony or Parvati, for that matter? Or Ozzy? Um, or are you hoping for, uh, people who want a second chance in the game and would really like to play again? Let me know when you guys, in the comments, what you guys think. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast episode. I know it's taken me a while to get back to it because of everything that's been going on in my life, but I'm really trying to get my career going as far as podcast stuff goes and my work as a digital comic artist and a digital artist, but you know, I'm really trying to make this life worth living and 
it wouldn't be possible for people like you. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed being outclassed, outspoken, and outsmarted with the Survivor Savant Podcast. This is Nathan Newport, signing out.